In this variance analysis video, we'll be focusing on material variances. Material variances are linked to the use of raw materials in a manufacturing business. And in this video, we'll be learning what material variances are, calculating the total material variance, and using formulae to calculate the total material variance, the material price variance, and the material usage variance. We'll discuss what might cause the variances, and then observe the additivity of variances. Finally, we'll explain how the quality of the raw materials bought can affect the variances that arise. So what is a material variance? A material variance calculates the difference between the actual amount spent on raw materials and then compares this to the amount that the business expects to spend on raw materials for the actual quantity of finished goods that were made. In other words, let's assume we have a business which makes 5,000 buckets in one month. The business expected to spend £22,500 on steel to make these 5,000 buckets, but actually ended up only spending £14,375. The difference between these two amounts is the total material variance. Let's continue with this same example. So we have the business that made 5,000 buckets in one month, but had budgeted to make 6,000 buckets. This is important and let's have a look at this and bear this in mind as we work through our example. We're then given some information about the raw materials. The quantity of steel to make a bucket was actually 2.5 kilograms per bucket, but had been expected to be 3 kilograms. The cost of the steel actually turned out to be £1.15 per kilogram, but had been expected to be £1.50 per kilogram. So we have some questions. What is the expected cost of the materials to make those 5,000 buckets that the business actually made in the month? And what is the actual cost of the materials that made the 5,000 buckets? I'd like you to pause the video now and answer these two questions, and then you can check your answers against mine in just a moment. The expected cost of making the 5,000 buckets is the 5,000 buckets multiplied by the cost of making each one. The business expected to use three kilograms of steel to make each one and expected the steel to cost £1.50 per kilogram. So we multiply all of these together to give a figure of £22,500 as the expected cost of making the 5,000 buckets. The actual cost of the materials that made the 5,000 buckets is the 5,000 buckets multiplied by the actual cost of making each one. In this case, that's 2.5 kilograms of steel multiplied by the actual cost of £1.15 per kilogram of steel, giving an answer of £14,375. The total material variance is the difference between these two, and so it's £8,125. It's a favourable variance because the actual cost of the materials was less or better than the business had expected. Let's move on now and look at the formulae, starting with the total material variance. This is the formula that you can use to calculate the total material variance. It's calculated in two parts, so we look at the brackets one at a time. In the first bracket, we multiply together the standard price per unit of material, in this case, it's per kilogram of steel, and multiply that by the standard usage of steel for the actual quantity of buckets made. From that, we deduct the actual price per unit of material, in other words, the actual price per kilogram of steel, and multiply that by the actual quantity of steel used. Notice in this formula, the words standard, expected and budgeted can be used interchangeably. So if you've seen a formula with slightly different wording, don't worry, they basically mean the same thing. So let's continue with our example. We'll put the information that we know into the formula now. So the standard price per unit of material is the amount the business expected to pay for a kilogram of steel. 
£1.50. The standard usage for the actual quantity made is the quantity of steel the business expected to use to have to make a bucket, three kilograms, and we multiply that by the actual quantity of buckets made, 5,000. Please note this really carefully. A lot of people make mistakes here and put in the budgeted quantity of buckets, the 6,000, but that's not correct. In this formula, it's the standard usage for the actual quantity made. And so please note that really, really carefully. Let's move on to the other bracket. The actual price per unit of material was the actual amount the business paid for the steel, £1.15. And we multiply that by the actual quantity of material used. This was 2.5 kilograms of steel per bucket, multiplied by the 5,000 buckets that were made. We can now rewrite this formula, but just using the numbers, as you can see I've shown here on the screen. Simplifying this gives 22,500 as the expected cost of the materials to make the 5,000 buckets, minus the actual cost of 14,375. You'll recognise those numbers from earlier in the video. And so this gives a favourable variance of £8,125. Remember that it's a favourable variance because the actual cost of the materials used was lower or better than the business had expected. The total material variance can be split into two sub-variances. These are called the material price variance and the material usage variance. The material price variance is caused by the price of the raw material being higher or lower than had been expected. The material usage variance is caused by a difference in the quantity of raw materials used compared to what the business had expected to use. Let's look at these in turn. We'll start with the material price variance. This is the formula. The material price variance is equal to the actual quantity of materials used. In other words, in this case, it would be the actual kilograms of steel used, multiplied by the standard price per unit of material. In other words, the cost of one kilogram of steel that was expected minus the actual price per unit of material. In other words, in our case, the actual price per kilogram of the steel. Using the same information as before, we can now put numbers into this formula. The actual quantity of material used was 2.5 kilograms of steel per bucket multiplied by the 5,000 buckets that were made. The standard price per unit of material is the £1.50 that the business was expecting to spend on the steel. The actual price of the steel was £1.15 per kilogram. Just leaving the numbers in this formula gives a, um, a formula that is shown as follows, which then can be simplified, giving us an answer of £4,375. This is a favourable variance and you can see that by comparing the actual price of the material, £1.15, to what was expected, £1.50. Because the actual price is lower or better than was expected, we have a favourable variance. Let's have a look in a bit more detail about the material price variances and what they indicate. A favourable material price indicates that the materials were purchased at a lower than expected cost. Possible reasons for this are materials of a worse quality than planned were bought, lower than expected inflation means that generally prices are lower than had been expected, or maybe there were good negotiations with suppliers, meaning that the cost was lower than the business had expected it to be. An adverse material price variance, on the other hand, indicates that materials were purchased at a higher than expected cost. Possible reasons for this could be materials of a better quality than planned were bought, which are always more ex or generally more expensive. It could be that inflation was higher than expected, or maybe there was a failure to negotiate successfully with suppliers. I hope you're enjoying this video. Topic videos like this one that cover the whole AQA A-Level accounting syllabus are available to subscribers on our website, www.studytheeasyway.com. In addition to the topic videos, there are also worksheets with fully explained answers. 
and online quizzes which give you an immediate score and feedback on each question. There are also a wide range of revision resources available, ready for preparation for exam time. There are also free resources available on the website so that you can try them out before you decide whether to subscribe. Let's continue now. Next, we'll move on to the material usage variance. The material usage variance is the other subvariance. Here's the formula for it. The material usage variance is calculated as the standard price per unit of material multiplied by the standard usage of materials for the actual quantity of buckets, in this case, that were made, minus the actual quantity of raw materials that were used. Again, continuing with our same example, let's put numbers into the formula. The standard price per unit of material in this case is the £1.50 per kilogram that the business was expecting to spend on the steel. The standard usage for the actual quantity made is the expected quantity of steel that the business thought they would need to use per bucket, 3 kilograms, multiplied by the actual quantity of buckets made, 5,000. Again, please be careful here. It is not the budgeted quantity of buckets, 6,000, that's used in the formula, and that's a really common mistake that's made. So here, remember, it's the standard usage for the actual quantity made, in this case, 5,000 buckets. We now deduct the actual quantity of materials used, which is calculated as the 2.5 kilograms of steel that was actually used per bucket, multiplied by the 5,000 buckets that were made. Leaving the numbers in the formula gives us the following information, which can be simplified and then an answer calculated, meaning that the material usage variance is £3,750. This is a favourable variance, and you can see that by looking at the actual quantity of material used, 12,500 kilograms, compared to the amount of steel the business was expecting to use, 15,000 kilogram. You can see those two bits of information in two lines above the answer. So because the actual quantity used, 12,500, was lower or better than expected, this results in a favourable variance. A favourable material usage variance indicates that less materials were used in making the total output, in our case of buckets, than had been expected. Possible reasons for this are better quality materials were bought than planned, and that means that there's generally uh, less waste because the materials are easier to handle. It could be that the workers have received training, which could result in less waste, or maybe the workers had been better supervised, also re resulting in less waste. On the other hand, an adverse material usage variant would indicate that more materials were used in making the total output than had been expected. Possible reasons for this could be worse quality materials being bought than planned, meaning the materials are difficult to handle and more gets wasted. It could be that new unskilled workers have been used, resulting in more waste, or possibly poor supervision of the workers, also resulting in more waste. Let's have a look now at the additivity of variances. This refers to the two sub-variances and they're linked to the total variance. In our example then, the material price variance was £4,375 favourable, and the material usage variance was £3,750 favourable. The total material variance, you may remember from earlier, was £8,105 favourable. So notice this figure then. It is the calculated total material variance using the formula from earlier, but notice that it is also the sum of the two subvariances above. In other words, if you put the material price variance and material usage variance into a calculator and combine them together, and because they're favourable variances, that means you would add them together, that gives you an answer of £8,125. In other words, the variances are additive. Combining the material price variance and material usage variances together 
will result in a figure that is equal to the total material variance. This can be a really useful check. So if you calculate the three variances using the formulae, you can check that they are additive to give you confidence that your calculations are correct. Finally, let's move on to discuss the quality of materials. Buying a better than planned quality of material can result in the following variances. An adverse material price variance, generally because better quality materials are usually more expensive to buy, combined with a favourable material usage variance. This is because better quality materials may be easier to handle and therefore produce less waste. So you often find this combination of two variances associated with buying better than planned quality of materials. Not always, but it is often a combination you'll see. Conversely, buying a worse than planned quality of materials can result in the following variances. A favourable material price variance, because worse quality materials are often cheaper to buy combined with an adverse material usage variance, because worse quality materials may be more difficult to handle, be unsuitable for the use they were intended for, break more, or result in higher levels of waste. So again, it's not always the case, but it is quite common that you see this combination of sub-variances associated with buying worse than planned quality of materials. That's the end of this video on material variances and I hope you found it useful. Subscribers to our website have access to topic videos like this one that cover the whole A-level accounting syllabus. Subscribers simply click on the topic that they're interested in, which gives them access to all of the resources for that topic. These include a wide range of topic videos covering all aspects of the topic that you need to know about, as well as worksheets, which have answers which are fully explained. Many topics also have multiple choice question quizzes where you're able to check your knowledge immediately because you get an immediate score and feedback. Visit our website www.studytheeasyway.com to find out more. There are free resources that you can look at before you decide whether to subscribe, and a description about the subscription options is available. You can also find us on social media. Our Instagram account is updated every week with free check your knowledge questions for both year 12 and year 13 accounting. So this is a great way of checking your knowledge as you work your way through the course. Thanks for watching this video. I hope it's been useful.